All right, so we've got another basics training for you today. These are your fundamentals in Chinese, we call them Ji Ben Gong, and these are gonna be the basic building blocks of all of your Kung Fu. So last time we trained stretching, so now you've got the splits after watching my video, we're gonna be doing some stance training. So stances are gonna be super important in your Kung Fu training. You're gonna use them to develop stability, generate power in your punches, get stronger legs, and they've also got a static value as well. So if you wanna amount to anything in your Kung Fu training, you've gotta practice your stances, they're really important. And I know that people always complain that stance training is boring, but okay, you've gotta spend time in stance training. Traditionally, you'd spend between a year and two years just doing basics and stance training before you moved on to learning any forms or weapons or applications or any of the fun stuff. So, quick complaining. When my Shifu in China arrived at the Shaolin Temple, then he had to spend a year just doing basics and stance training for eight hours a day, every single day. So you've really got nothing to complain about. Put the work in. This first stance is horse stance. You're gonna keep your feet facing forward and parallel. You're gonna push your knees out to the side, tuck your hips back slightly, and keep your back straight and your head pulled upright. Not that I'm looking at anyone in particular, but you wanna avoid doing this. Or this. Or this. This next stance is called forward stance. It's also known as hill climbing stance or bow stance. So as you transition forward into the movement, you want to keep your hips level and that's going to allow you to generate power in your movements. You want to keep your back knee straight, your front knee bent, your chest open, your head pulled upright and you want to look forward because it's important to maintain proper intention in your movements. When you're punching in a hill climbing stance, you're generating power from the floor. So you're pushing with your back heel into the floor and the power is coming up through your knee, through your hip, through your spine, through your shoulder, to your elbow, to your fist. It's important that you lean slightly forward with your back. If you lean too much back like this, then you're causing tension in your lower back. That's going to stop you from generating power properly and it can also lead to injury. This stance is called cat stance. It's also known as empty leg stance and that's because almost all of your weight is on your back leg. So the front leg can be called empty. Bend the back knee and keep your back straight but lean it slightly forward. And as usual, having intention and confidence in your movements is important. So make sure you're looking forward. This stance is called hanging leg stance or if you've watched the original Karate Kid, you might call it crane stance. Lift your front knee off the floor as high as you can, pointing your toes downwards. As usual, keep the back straight and look forwards. This is called circle entering stance or kneeling stance. Keep your back knee behind the front heel and keep your knee off the floor. This is called seven star stance. It's quite representative of praying mantis styles. You want most of your weight on the back leg and you want your front heel down and toes up. This next one is called Collapsing Stance. In modern Wushu and other northern Kung Fu styles, you often see it done quite low like this. But in Mantis, we do this stance quite high. You want both feet parallel and facing to the side. One knee bent, one knee straight, hips facing to the side. This last stance is called Cross Leg Stance or Unicorn Stance. You want to put your back knee behind your front heel and sink down nice and low for stability, but don't let your knee touch the floor. Make sure you keep your back upright. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to stance transitions. This is really where the benefits of the stances is gonna to start to become apparent. So practicing static stances is good for building leg strength, but really the point of the stances is that it's teaching you certain ways to move your body. So particular ways of turning your hips or certain ways of shifting your body weight or stepping or moving. I think a good way of putting it is that the stances aren't a position you're meant to move to, but they're a position you should be moving through. So rather than stopping on each stance, you should be moving through it. And that's going to teach you how to be efficient with your movement and how to generate power properly. Even though we're going through it step by step and really slowly right now, 
when you start becoming a bit more familiar with stances, then your movements are going to start to look more like this. Okay, so moving on to the next drill. Um, this next one is a seven move combination that you can go through to help train your transitions. Starting in a horse stance, you're going to ward off left, right, left, three circles and a cat stance. You're on your back hand near your front elbow. Then you're going to lift up into crane stance, double mantis hooks. Step forward into hill climbing stance, double palm strike. You're going to step your right foot up to your left. Your left foot goes forward into seven star stance and you do a left rolling back fist. Followed by power forcing and kneeling stance. Back into collapsing stance with mantis hooks. And then back into horse stance, mantis catches the cicada. Next, you're just gonna repeat the same on the other side. So, board off into cat stance. Double mantis hooks in crane stance. Double palm strike in hill climbing stance. Step up, rolling back fist in seven star stance. Power forcing in kneeling stance. Mantis hooks in collapsing stance. And finally back to horse stance. Alright, that's the end of the video. I just want to say that even though I've just listed all of these different tips and exercises that you can use for training your stances, none of that actually matters unless you go out and train them. So like, when you see all these Shaolin monks and old Kung Fu masters and their stances are so sharp and their moves are so powerful, it's not because they've been given any secret tips on how to do their stances, it's because they've gone out and trained it for years and that's why they're so good at it. Moral of the video is that your basics are the most important part of your training and they can never use enough work. So get out there and train. Alright, thanks for watching.